Airheads can be tricky things, but when used under the right conditions, they are absolute game changers. In this video, I'm going to give you some tips to help increase your chances of success when using airheads in Hell Let Loose, so this doesn't happen to you. What did he say his name was? Gabatron. Hello everyone, I am Gebatron. If you don't know how airheads work, then go ahead and watch the video at the top right, then come back to this one as we aren't going to cover any of the mechanics of it here. My first piece of advice is to recognize what you want to use your airhead for. Uh, now you're saying, Doug Gebatron, we're trying to get behind enemy lines. Okay, right, but what for? Uh, it's the answer to that question that can help you better understand where to place your airhead. So I've broken this down into a few different reasons you'd want to use an airhead, or a few different situations in which you'd want to use it. And if you guys have more advice or want to help us out with your own tips, then please let us know down in the comments. So before we talk about using airheads, let's talk about not using them. If we can gain access to territory without using an airhead, then it's usually not necessary to deploy one. For example, if we have Able Squad here and we want Able to begin an attack from the north of the strong point, if they can get there without meeting any resistance, then an airhead isn't going to give me anything I don't already have. As a matter of fact, it could just tip the enemy off, and redeploying Able Squad to an airhead won't really save me any significant amount of time either. Okay, now let's say that Able Squad has met resistance and can't make it to the north of our strong point. So here's the first situation you'd want to use an airhead. That is, to open up a new front or start an offensive operation in territory we cannot access. I like to put these types of airheads in safe areas, far away from any action as I just need a presence in this area and not a presence that is also an immediate threat to the enemy. So in other words, I just need to get a squad or two there to set up some offensive infrastructure, you know, like uh, an offensive garrison and OPs, to then begin an attack. Able can redeploy on the airhead. We can direct any defensive squads to intercept the resistance Able squad was facing. And then we can give Able any other support they may need like airdrop supplies, etc. The next one is a reinforcing airhead, or, or what I like to call the nail in the coffin airhead. Let's say Able Squad has pushed south, but they've met resistance they just can't overcome. On top of that, we maybe lost our offensive garrison some time ago. We don't want Able to disengage because we don't want to lose the territory they've gained, and they're too busy fighting to worry about building a new offensive garrison. And even if they did build one, they are far too close to the enemy, so it would just lock up anyway. Able needs help fast if they're going to succeed, so we don't have the luxury of dropping an airhead in a safe spot far away. We're going to have to drop this one much closer using whatever intel Able can provide us with to put it in the best spot possible. Now we can direct Baker Squad to redeploy on the airhead and help Able push into the strong point. The next type of airhead is what I call the time saver. Here we simply want access to enemy territory and we just aren't in a position to get there as we don't have any garrisons or squads near the area. So we don't know if there's any resistance here, we don't know if we could easily walk in or not, but it doesn't matter because it would just take too long to get a squad into position to even find out. I treat these very similar to our first example where we just want access to enemy territory, placing them pretty far away in low risk areas. The Leapfrog Airhead. Remember earlier when I said you don't want to drop an airhead in territory you already have access to? Well, here is the exception. I call it the Leapfrog Airhead. This airhead is deployed when you are about to capture a sector and want to move parts of your team very quickly into an area close to the next enemy point, but still in your territory. These usually work out best when you have an enemy strong point that is closer to your territory than normal. Here your squads can quickly get a garrison up and begin pushing in and surrounding the enemy point before they've had enough time to regroup. Another good example of these is in offensive mode matches where points can be spread very far apart and you probably don't have much infrastructure built up as you didn't know where the next strong point was going to be. I will say that I don't often see these result in actually capturing the enemy point quickly, but they do such a good job of keeping the enemy on their back foot that it does take them a really long time to organize any offensives of their own. They're just too busy holding off your attack. They usually work out well when the enemy is pushed back past the midpoint and late in the game. 
Last is the defensive emergency airhead. That's right, airheads aren't exclusively offensive tools. There may be occasions where you'll want to use these as a last resort to hold a point you're losing. While they can be used when you're losing any point where you lack garrisons, you're mostly going to use these when pushed back to your own HQ. Garrison networks are usually pretty poor in this area, as teams more often than not only have that one garrison in the strong point and rely on the HQ as a backup. Strong point garrisons are usually lost pretty quickly, and once you start losing the point, you lose access to that HQ spawn. In these situations, a last ditch airhead may be the only way to get your team back into the sector quickly. It's best if you can see this situation happening early so you can drop it before it's too late. These can come in handy on offensive mode matches when you need to redeploy large portions of your team back to low infrastructure areas. If you're lucky, you'll still have a squad or two in the sector that will give you a place to drop the airhead where it can at least be a little safe, but these are always risky. So the reason we talked about these different types of airheads is to help guide you on where to place them in certain situations to help you achieve your goals. As in, if all I need is access to enemy territory, then I don't need to put my airhead in a risky spot. But conversely, if I'm desperately trying to keep my territory gains, then I don't want to place it too far away either. Also keep in mind your offensive garrisons. Sometimes having airheads closer to hot spots is a good thing, as they don't lock up when the enemy is near them. Making sure your airhead placement is augmenting your goals will help your airheads be more successful. But that's not all there is to it, so here are some more things to consider. Identifying and avoiding high traffic areas. Here is an example from a game I recently played. The enemy was advancing on us here at Customs from the Northeast, so we know they have at least one garrison somewhere up here. Additionally, the enemy HQ is here where armor will be spawning. We lacked offensive garrisons and needed access to enemy territory, so an airhead was placed here. I'm sure the idea was to disrupt this attack while we could start our own to the south. The problem is that this airhead was placed in or near a high traffic area. That means a lot more enemy eyes to see it, and those eyes are in a better position to do something about it. Here's how it turned out. Oh, oh fuck. Wow. Oh boy. That airhead is down. Dear God. <laughs> Just waited to. Now a failed airhead where a lot of the team gets killed can lose you a strong point. Even if your team redeploys only once the airhead hits the ground, that's 20 seconds redeploying, another 10 seconds waiting for the airhead spawn wave, 10 second death screen once everyone is killed, and a potential 40 seconds to spawn back on a garrison. A total of close to one and a half minutes. That's one and a half minutes the enemy doesn't have any resistance, and you can advance a long way in one and a half minutes. Now it's not guaranteed, but perhaps an airhead somewhere further south would have given us a better chance as it would have been in a lower traffic, less risky area, all while still giving us a way to attack their strong point. Avoid entire team deploys on your airheads. There are a couple reasons you'll want to avoid this. The first one we just talked about. If it fails, you could lose a large portion of your team for at least a minute and a half. Just don't put all your eggs in one basket like that. The second is that you'll lose any advantage you have in other areas. For example, and I, I do see this a lot, you'll have Able Squad attacking from the south and they've stopped making progress. So you send in your airhead because you want Baker Squad to join the fight from the north. But instead of just Baker Squad spawning there, both Baker and Able spawn in. Now you've just lost the attack in the south. The enemy simply turns around quick and what could have been a nice pincer move is now just another single front fight. So always make sure you know who you want to spawn on the airhead and direct your squads accordingly. If the first squad or two spawns in safely, then you can always direct more squads to spawn there in the next couple waves. Recon before you drop. If you guys have watched my commander tips video at the top right, then you'll already be familiar with this tip, but I cannot tell you guys how many airheads I've dismantled all by myself just by chasing it down and holding F when it hits the ground. Now imagine if a sniper had been in the area, or a spotter, 
or both, or even a recon vehicle. It would have turned that failed airhead into a successful airhead. Airheads usually aren't chased down by more than just a couple enemy soldiers as the others are busy, you know, fending off more immediate threats. Making sure you have a recon squad, recon vehicle, or just anyone in the area will help defend the airhead from threats, and additionally, they can let the team know if any other risks show up. Say a recon vehicle shows up and is just sitting there waiting for your team to spawn in. Well, now you know to tell your team to spawn somewhere else as the airhead has been compromised. This will help you not waste time. Another big benefit of having recon in the area is they can let you know where the best place to put the airhead is. In this example, the airhead is dropped right in the middle of a heavily defended street and you can see how that turns out. Had this commander asked for a mark from a recon squad, this massacre could have been avoided. Uh, bonus tip while we are watching this, and I know I just touched on this a moment ago, but make sure you are telling your squads not to spawn on airheads that have already been compromised. That's kind of what the enemy team is banking on, is you wasting time and manpower on an airhead that is being camped. Instead, stop your squads from spawning there so it's now the enemy wasting time watching an airhead that no one is spawning on. And now you might say, Gabatron, if you already have recon squad there, why not just drop supplies on them instead of an airhead? And yeah, you can do that too. Uh, you'll likely need supplies there anyway. It's just that the airhead is already a spawn and won't have to be built. My spotter won't have to expose themselves to build an airhead. Another reason is the airhead might be in an area where an offensive garrison could lock up. Airheads don't lock. And you can go ahead and apply this tip to defending as well. Don't go take down airheads by yourself as infantry. Bring as many teammates as you can spare, as you just might run into resistance on your way. Even if you don't make it to the airhead in time, you'll still be able to share the enemy's location with teammates, and you'll be able to help delay any enemy advance. Last thing I'll touch on is the old deception tactic of dropping both an airhead and an ammo drop at the same time. I usually don't do this, but I have seen many players mistake an ammo drop for an airhead before and they'll take off in the wrong direction. Here I'm dropping them right next to each other just so you can see the difference, but usually these are dropped far enough apart so as to lead the enemy on a wild goose chase away from the actual airhead. This will not fool knowledgeable players, but not everybody watches Gebatron Gaming like you do. Uh, check the top right if you are interested in more air support comparison videos, uh, as learning what's happening in the skies above you will help you better interpret the battlefield around you. All right, so maybe you're newer to commanding and this all seems a little overwhelming to you. Then I would say if I had to pick one of these tips as being the most important one to remember, it would probably be identifying and avoiding high traffic areas. I think that's probably the simplest to do and doesn't require any extra coordination with other squads. If you just start using that tip, you'll immediately see an increase in the amount of successful airheads you drop. The rest of the tips are just icing on the cake that will come more naturally once you gain experience in the commander role. But now we need to hear from you guys down in the comments. What are your airhead tips? And you don't have to look at it only from the commander's perspective. Uh, what has prevented you from taking these down as defenders? What makes it hard for you to find them? Make sure to let us know as we are all here to learn and improve our game. Well, that's that. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video or at least got some fresh perspective. Always check for a pinned comment as I'll add any updates or great tips from you guys down there. Also check the description for more ways to help the channel. Consider clicking that join button to receive perks including early access to new videos just like this one. Uh, pull the trigger on that like button, share with your friends or community, subscribe for more. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.